data that you can give there with your yeah. household. <laughs> it very much annoys me when my 10-year-old daughter's on YouTube all day looking at makeup videos. Let's just say that. Yeah, that that's a different point in itself, isn't it? That's a sociological yeah. one. <laughs> and, uh, and, and you're looking at video. I think right now it's something that benefits big brands. And I think that because it's 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 not easier, but they have the funds to go and create really good videos. And when we look at smaller businesses, there is a resistance there because it usually means the business owner will be the person in that video. And so that is a big hurdle to jump over. We all look at ourselves, you know, you and I are always talking about how we sound on the podcast and how differently we hear it to other people. Mm -hmm. And if we go into video, that's another level. We're now hearing ourselves and looking at ourselves as well. But I think that if we spin that around and look at that as an opportunity, the fact that not everybody and not all of your competitors will have a video out there is the exact reason why video advertising is so cost effective. Yep. So right now we can promote a video on Facebook for a couple of pence per view. Yeah. Now even though Facebook is a really cost effective place to advertise, if we compare that to promoting a, a piece of content or our podcast or uh, a free email giveaway, then that's going to be 30 pence and upwards. So it's a tenth of the price as a minimum. If we also look at new platforms like Facebook Live, have you played with Facebook Live at all yet, Neil? Have you seen no. one in action? No. So for everyone who's not yet seen Facebook Live, it's a, a new feature from Facebook where you broadcast a video at a specific time. So the idea is that people on your Facebook page will log on at that time and watch you speak in live. It's very much Facebook's way of competing with Periscope, which is Twitter's tool, and is, is of the same idea. And what happens is, as this Facebook Live um, episode is being broadcast live, people ask questions and they type them live to the Facebook page. And the person doing the video will see those and respond to them. So it's a very new way of using video on the internet because it's live and it's interactive. And that, I think, is an interesting new day. That's an interesting... Well, it's, it's, it's effectively broadening the webinar concept to a whole different type of audience, isn't it? Absolutely. It is, well, it is, in essence, a webinar that you can promote that you're going to be doing on a certain day That's and then you're going to be able to target very specifically with Facebook ads, um, specific people that you may want to hop on to that. And you know, Facebook. speaking of Facebook ads, I saw one yesterday for a Facebook live session that had been targeted to me, and it, it said Facebook live for this company, who I won't mention because we don't want to give them any promo, is happening right now. Come along. Mm -hmm. So that ad was sent to me at the exact time that the Facebook live episode was, was being All broadcast right. in real time in real right. time and they knew you were online they knew, yeah or oh, i just happened to be online and yeah. therefore so you so so it's not even interrupting well i mean it's going to interrupt what you're doing but it's not interrupting your online experience at that point in time because that's where you are exactly you are there you're not even leaving the platform exactly yeah. exactly right so alongside of that um twitter is now extending the amount of time that your videos posted on their platform can run for. Because of this new competition from Facebook Live, it means that the, the, you know, the pretty short Periscope videos now will be extended. And the big hurdle for us all to get over is being comfortable, being mm. on video. That's the key. And I, th and I believe that I just scribbled two words down there when you were talking about video advertising and the power of it. The reason it's so successful is because it's transparency. You are completely and utterly approachable and authentic. They can see you in the flesh. It's not like reading a blog that you could m have mulled over for a week. It's not like seeing an ad campaign. It is you there in the flesh. That's why I know that the four different ladies I mentioned earlier about beauty products believe and trust in what they're seeing on YouTube because they see, for example, the following of these people that are putting the demos of a product on and giving a hands-on tutorial on how to apply a certain makeup. And then they are seeing that in the flesh, an authentic, genuine level of marketing. 
I don't think it can get any better than that. And like you say, to get back to your point, it is all about the authenticity of the person and us being comfortable delivering that kind of marketing. And a great thing to say, because the advantage, if we go back to the, the big brands which are making fantastic videos, putting them on YouTube and promoting them to the world, when we're a small business and we look at that, we think, I can't do that. I can't hire a studio and bring in a high-level director and put this thing together in that way. But that's what people want, do they? Exactly. They don't want to see something that's been done by, let's say, Nivea in a studio with £50,000 worth of budget. They want my, my daughter, my niece, wants to see someone in their bedroom applying this in real life. And that's the angle to take. If you yeah. are not a big brand, be yourself. Yeah, be yourself absolutely. on the video. Yeah, and you know the first person I ever saw doing a Facebook Live is an author, a fantastic author who's also a great web marketeer called Mark Dawson. And every Friday he does a Facebook Live session uh, as he is picking his kids up from school. So he literally arrives fifteen minutes early, does a Facebook Live stream in the car whilst he's waiting for them to finish school. And that's what it is. Now, you couldn't really get any more authentic because <laughs> you're in his life, in his car, you see the weather, you know, he's, he's, it's not like he's dressed up in a suit ready for this video. He's just talking with people yeah. who want to reach him. Real, real life. Real life, exactly. Yeah. So, we've um, gone through a couple of trends there in this podcast. Why don't you choose one, Neil? Which is your favourite trend of the month oh it would be buying a laptop for a student because that's specifically what I'm searching for right now I know enough about every element of a specification of any kind of computer it's mulling over the tablet versus the laptop versus the desktop you need something that's got mobility so the desktop is out you need something that's got a little bit more oomph than a tablet so the laptop is the one and then it would be targeting okay for a student at university level what specification does he need but i don't want to spend a thousand pounds so we've got he's got the ultimate all singing all dancing laptop that can play call of duty or fifa <laughs> so it's horses for courses is building an online campaign speaking from the the business's point of view targeting here it would be how do i capture my interest level with my specific needs to make a purchase and that one is fascinating to me i could say the same about buying a backpack for a 10 year old girl because that's a fascinating one as well but the big brands in our area and in any area, I suppose, in the UK, will have that targeted because they know, I mean, whether you go to Tesco's, you go to Primark, or you go to, for us, Cheshire Oaks, wherever you go, or to a Nike store, Adidas store, they've got loads. So the targeting of a backpack, I can get one anywhere, but the targeting of a laptop, I'm going to go online, I'm going to get the spec that I want, and I know kind of what I need. So I find it fascinating looking at how these different types of companies Big or small, target me online. So who's your who's the advertiser in your head? It might be different to the computer that you buy, but who do you think so far has done the best marketing to you? Well, do you want me to name names? Name names, you go for it. Okay, what well, you, you can never fa I can never fail to be provided with what I want from Amazon at the best price and believing the reviews that I read and in the in the main when I see 50 reviews it's kind of going to have a general flow of whether it's a decent product or not so Amazon but in terms of laptops it would be eBuyer oh interesting yeah because I've never they've never failed to deliver whenever I've needed something around the 300 to 400 pound mark for a laptop of the level that I need for him, as I've done in the past for myself or for my wife, that's needed to last us two or three years before I go and buy a new one. Very good. So that's two great marketeers to, to go and check out. Amazon, which which are just fantastic at what they do. Mm. And eBuyer, which was, I'd heard of that brand, but never, never myself come across them. Yeah, just a technology provider, and they have always delivered the goods. Brilliant. Excellent. Yeah. So what I'm going to go for my kind of trend of the month is, is Facebook Live. I think it's a, a really interesting new possibility on the Facebook platform and that pushes our boundaries, which is always a good thing. Let's all get on video. 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, be authentic. Yeah, as, be authentic. as difficult and as, as unnatural as it may feel for some people to do, as soon as you effectively break the seal of doing it, get used to your own face uh, and then your own voice. The natural authenticity of someone on screen presenting something to real people with a genuine need that you can empathise with, that will sell so much more than someone reading 10 blogs or dealing with any other kind of marketing that you see every day that just gets dumbed down by the wave of marketing that people are seeing on every different type of technology and device they use. Absolutely. Can I add, finally, just to wrap round three Key points, I think, that wrap around why trends are important. Go for it. The the most important element, and this is from a a business point of view, looking at how can I research or target the relevant trends for my business. And it can sound so obvious, as we've said, that different industries look at different times of years. But the first thing is go on to Google Trends and look at the analytics for year-on-year statistics around certain things you provide whether it's a general industry or whether it's a product. I did an example search with back to school, a very broad back to school phrase, and it very clearly shows you that August is the absolute spike of activity for anything related to back to school. It's the same for student laptop. Okay, so that's point one. Always go into Google Trends, look at the year-on-year stats. The second point would be consider the key periods when people are making decisions around what you sell. Now, that may not be specifically seasonal elements, but that would be them as a consumer, when do they make certain decisions? So we're talking backpacks, good example. People are looking for backpacks for young children at in this month. They weren't looking in June. Well, they may have done if they ripped the backpack in the last week of term, but they really want to hold off. Same with school shoes. They really want to hold off from May, June, July until they get to now so they can buy them because their children's feet are growing so big that they need to buy them in this month and hopefully in this month because they won't have that much time till September to grow even more so they then can last 12 months. An excellent point. When is the decision-making process made by the consumer? The third one would be, and this is around the different types of demographics, so are there certain locations that are relevant to what you want to look on Google Trends at and sell products for? And then any kind of key events around those demographics, those people, those places, those those locations where people are going to be looking to target their, buying their products from you so that you can target campaigns around the seasonal, seasonal, sorry, elements of the different locations and the events in which they partake. Excellent stuff. Three great points and one of them reminded me of one of my most dreaded days of the year, going to buy new school shoes. All I wanted to do was wear my trainers. Well, yes, we're all a little rebel at heart. (laughs) Great stuff, Neil. So thanks for being here today. And enjoy the rest of your Thursday. Thank you very much. Take care, Phil. My name is Phil Byrne, and I'd like to thank you for listening today. If you have any questions on anything you have heard in today's podcast feel free to email your queries to podcasts at positivesparks.co.uk. We are an online advertising team who strive to help you thrive online. Want to know where to start with pay-per-click for your business? Download our free online advertising pack at positivesparks.co.uk forward slash pack. Until next time, goodbye 